Hi, welcome to the 1 in 20 show. Today we've had some funny complications and there's Peter over there. Peter, give us a wave. Basically what happened is we had a tripod completely break on us right before the show started. So we've improvised and this is where we're at right now. Uh, Peter's going to be heading up that position with sound and everything from, from there. Today I'm joined by my friend, the very talented Erin Chalakian. She is a recent theater arts graduate at Cal State University, Northridge, who recently assistant directed their production of Evita this last spring. She is a very talented tap dancer and teaches at Green Room Music Studios in, Santa, in the Santa Clarita Valley. She also plans on assistant directing a union production of Schoolhouse Rock Live under award-winning stage and television director Art Menke. She is one of the most passionate and hardworking people I know, and I'm very excited to see what the future has in store. Erin, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. We did it. We did it. We're I, here. What you didn't see <laughs> is all the times that I failed that introduction. It's okay. We'll um, add it at the end. It's okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll put it as an outtake. Um where do we start? There's so much to talk about yeah. with you because for me, I my relationship and friendship with you has been one that spans so many different areas of Absolutely. theater and music and dance and um, and I know you've you know you just graduated school, so I know mm-hmm. that you were doing a lot this last semester as well, getting everything prepped. Um, so I wanted you to just kind of fill everybody in on on what's been going on, especially the last semester. Yeah. Um, I mean, your last semester of school, especially college, is hectic in general mm. because you're ending your career as a student, yeah. uh, depending on if you continue on to right. master's and all that. Right. But um, I decided after I broke my ankle and, I, and, and everything not to audition for the shows mm. in the last semester because right. I, I couldn't act. Right. Um, all of the shows involved movement. There was a musical, a movement piece and all these things. Um, so Hmm. I went out on a whim and asked to assistant direct and I really wanted to assistant direct Evita because Evita scared me so much because it's a sung through musical. Uh, Um, and it, it was one of the bigger shows that semester Mm -hmm. with a bigger cast. And I was so scared to be in charge Mm. of my, my fellow classmates and, and, um, kind of weird. It's like, it's really weird. (laughs) It's really hard, you you know, because you don't, yeah. Because you want to do right by yourself, but you right. also want to do right by them. Right. And I actually, I didn't do well in the beginning. I stepped mm. on a lot of toes yeah. um, because I thought I deserved a certain amount of respect, but I didn't, I didn't gain it yet. Mm. Um, right. And so I was assistant directing a show, but at the same time, I had a full workload because I was finishing up my, my last semester. I had 13 units, right. which isn't a lot, but when it's your last semester, it's a ton. And How I many, also... Did you have ensembles and stuff that you had to be in or, or like any one units that were worth like a lot more? Oh, or... um, yes. I mean, luckily all of my classes were performance based. Mm. So there weren't any like, I didn't, I didn't have any papers my last semester, which, which nice. was what a blessing, yeah. right? <laughs> um, all well, of my, all of my finals or anything like that yeah. were performance things. So okay. I would have to sing a song for a class mm-hmm. or, um, and I did have, uh, analyses that I had to turn in on songs that I was singing and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so I was doing a full workload and assistant directing a show I had three jobs at the time. I was healing from my broken ankle. Which, how did you break it, by the way? <laughs> I was skateboarding like a dummy at the oh mall. Oh, my gosh. It's the I was one at the thing mall. they tell you not to do. I know. I, and the funny <laughs> thing is, it. I know that, you know, and I was right. in this... I was in this point in my life where I had just had this really big life change and I was so excited to like take my life back. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to go skateboard. Oh, and, the irony. And, man. Oh God. Wow. And I was, and it was just so dumb. And the oh, worst part is I in. didn't tell my mom mm. where I was going mm. and I ended up breaking my ankle. So she didn't even know oh. I had left the house. But it wasn't like a, a nice easy break. Oh like... no. I shattered it. Oh. Just completely shattered my bones it was great it was a jolly <laughs> time i was bedridden oh i was bedridden for 22 days oh i was actually the, i was the lead in a play um in that gas- was supposed was it gaslight, gaslight. Yeah, yeah, yeah i was yeah. mrs manningham and gaslight wow uh which i'm it's a story that i'm very passionate about still mm-hmm. to this day mm-hmm. um and we were two weeks out from opening and just shattered my ankle so oh. my really good friend jc porter took over my role um stepped in at the last second and when i say that 
I was the lead of the show. I mean, I was the, like, I never left the stage. There were two times that Mrs. Manningham leaves the stage. Oh, my goodness. And it's for, like, eight lines. And it's one of those Maybe. things. It's one of those things where it's like, <laughs> there's no, that's why you have an understudy. Yeah. Right? I mean, right? at any point and in time. And they don't, yeah. they don't do understudies often in mm-hmm. college, mm-hmm. which I think is, is, I get why they don't, but I also think that they should. But, but they did also, for you. They, they did wouldn't for you have to. No. Oh no, she she was actually in the show as a different character. Oh my god. And gosh. then they had to recast her part, move her up. Wow. She had to learn a new dialect because uh, the show is based in London, so yeah. she had she had um I don't even remember what hers was, but it was different and I had an RP. Right. And yeah. so she had to learn the RP and that it was And, and she, she basically it was off. doing yeah, relearning everything you had already learned. And how much time did she have? Two weeks. Two weeks. And that's including tech. <laughs> oh so <my> she literally... <laughs> One week of normal rehearsal. And, I yeah. don't even know how she... And she oh was a student at the time, too. So she mm-hmm. was going through, like, finals and all of this stuff and dealing with it. Oh and I was I was lucky enough that all of my professors um, let, me, let me do the work when I got back and yeah. all of these things, but I also got really behind because of it because yeah. I was catching up on three weeks that I missed while also trying to keep up with the week that I was there. And it was ridiculous. And, oh, but I passed and without those professors, I would not have graduated this mm. past semester. I would have had to redo that whole semester. My so goodness. I, I lend my success at this point to all of my professors from that semester. And that's wonderful. Cause that, I mean, we talk about this. I literally talk about this every episode. Um, is that's such a, that's like the reason you go to school is to have those professors come alongside of you Absolutely. and train you and grow you. And that doesn't happen everywhere. No, and no. There are so just, many people that have bad experiences with their teachers. And I'm yeah. lucky enough that everywhere I went, I found such a support system mm. in all of my professors, oh, even yeah. the professors that I have, like I have, uh, I have professors from CSUN that I, we butt heads, but we loved each other, mm-hmm. you know, like they respected me and mm-hmm. I respected them, but mm-hmm. we, we like, you know, like we, <laughs> we would get mad at each other, but yeah. that's because more than, more than a teacher, they're a mentor, like mm-hmm. their job is, and a big thing I really loved about CSUN is that their theater degree is an all-around theater degree. Huh. So you don't go into their theater degree and you're like, I'm an actor. You know, right, it right. doesn't work that way. Right. You go in as an actor, but mm-hmm. you learn everything. Which is wonderful. So you leave having taken a scenic class and a lighting class and a costumes class and everything. Wonderful. So the stage managers have taken acting classes. Right. And the directors have taken acting classes and scenic classes. Mm-hmm. So you leave knowing theater. Wow. You know, you know Wonderful. all of it. And that was yeah. what I was looking for. And there are so many people that talk down on CSUN. Um, people talk down on everything. So, right. I'm they sure just it's... love to hate things. <laughs> yeah, they love and to hate. So, yeah, um, sure. But I, I enjoyed all of it. And Wonderful. so my final semester was a real testament to the love that I have for it because yeah. I put all of my time mm. into CSUN. Mm-hmm. I was there. Um, I had 14 hour days where I would show up and my class started at eight and I was yeah. home at at 10 30 um and on top of that i was working my three jobs i work at the performing arts center at coc Mm -hmm. um at the time yes at the time i was working at center stage dance academy um and green room music studios teaching tap um so and were you teaching personally as well yes is that in that so um I teach I teach privates and groups at Green Room, but it's okay, okay. technically my business. So right. I rent the room and the space from Green Room, but yeah. it's all under me. Wow. Um, so I get my own students. I schedule my own times. I, we have a, a joint calendar where mm-hmm. we schedule the room. Mm-hmm. Um, so I lend all of my success in that field to Green Room and Stephanie Davis. Absolutely. But I'm the one that from day one had to get it going. And I actually, for the past four years, have never been without a student. Wow. Yeah. Wonderful. So ever since well, day I mean, one. Congratula- so thank congr- you. Congratulations. Cause that plays in with all of the different things that you're up to. Absolutely. And that's kind of the, the theme I think of this episode that we're going to be talking about is the, the ability to be versatile and Absolutely. handle a bunch of different things, maybe to just get, you know, cause you, you always have your one spearheaded focus. Like, okay, I want to be an actor, right? Of course. And that's what you want to pursue to the end. But then sometimes you don't realize, and this segues into the COC thing that you, yeah. that you did. But this segues into that in in that you are able to try 
to do stage management or try to do, you know, get into your, you can get into your welding carpentry Absolutely. right now as well. But like all of these different assets make you a better actor or a better director. I completely or, agree. It's the same with the film world. I've, it's the same thing. Directors know how to do things because they did everything because else. they did everything else and then they got to that and it's it's exactly. all a hierarchy and they always say exactly. it's all on who you know right but i think it's more it is on who you know but i think that is a testament to it's all in what you've done mm. it's all in what you've touched mm. um and Wonderful. and that's a big a big part of the performer that i am right. is because of the worldliness that i have gained from that world from mm -hmm. the theater world mm -hmm. the idea and it's actually really difficult being an actor that knows about everything else because huh. it's great because yeah. you know everything, yep. but also your job as an actor is to focus on only acting. Mm -hmm. But you can sit on that stage and see everything else. And see everything else. Ignorance is blessed sometimes. Yes. But and that kind of is counter culture to what we're going to be chatting about. But right. if you want But I think it's important to yeah. to say that like ignorance is bliss when it comes to acting, which is funny and sad but it's mm -hmm. also really true that you learn so much as an actor on how to work with other people and you will get cast more if you understand everything else mm, I've, I've been told that by so many directors that they would work with me 10 times over just because of my knowledge of everything else mm. because i can sit there and say they're focusing that light so a hold means a hold because if i move that light is no longer in that spot right, and you understand and it. you understand that mm -hmm. but a lot of people especially that was one thing i learned a lot assistant directing evita is that a lot of those students had never been in a hold had never been through a tech hmm. procedure like that or had but had never been explained why it was so important not important? to leave right exactly. um and why that's, is tech important yeah right, and that's exactly. a big thing too is that's the point of learning you know is that's the point of school is well it's to, all to highlight that that's the thing that people don't understand that people the people with opinions and stuff, um, like actors with opinions, drive me nuts because the whole the whole point in having tech and the whole reason everybody else is there is to make you look better because you're the talent. Oh yeah, it's the same thing in film that the actors who are difficult to work with really suck. You know, they suck the life out of the project Absolutely. because they don't realize like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm sitting here in the limelight being tailored to by all of these yeah. different people that's the whole reason they're there they're yeah. they're there to influence you and make you look better so now as we've been chatting about all that how did rounding out your skills over at coc you know influence you on everything you're doing right now um so i had this really great opportunity to um do an internship through coc and it yeah. was a carpentry and welding internship and i was the only intern there were supposed to be three or four of us and mm -hmm. it ended up just being me Wonderful. and i worked directly with brody Steele and michelle wall and i learned so much mm -hmm. and when i say i learned so much i mean because i was one of three carpenters on a show that was bigger than life it was mm -hmm. ginormous if you yeah. guys saw um little shop of horrors mm -hmm. at coc that mm -hmm. was the show i built and that show um i saw the sets are beautiful it was it Amazing. was it, yeah. it was quite insane and and uh we built it in such a short time and almost all of the flats had a certain angle that we had to find or figure out and oh almost everything was a compound miter which means that it's two angles going into each other yeah um wow. and this was my first time in three years building because mm. the whole way i got um got hired at 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 coc was because yeah. i did their stagecraft class mm. and through shop hours and this is actually really funny Brody initially didn't like me hmm. because he thought that I was a brown noser because every time he taught me something, yeah. I would get really excited. I would right. get practically giddy Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because he'd teach me how to, how to build something and I'd be like, what? That's yeah. so cool. And he thought I had you. no idea. And he thought I was just trying to get an A. That's so funny. And then when he realized after my 50 hours in the shop that that was real and I actually mm -hmm. thoroughly enjoyed being hands on mm. and the thing about carpentry yeah. that i love is that it's black and white mm. you either do it right or you do it wrong you can't there is no gray area because if there's mm -hmm. a gray area someone's dead right right <laughs> and so that's, really, that's the one that's a part, morbid thought but right it's true it's it's true. It's, yeah. it's so true though yeah. and the thing too is as an artist mm. so much of what we do is gray mm. so much of what we do is could be right yeah you know i mean it's right yeah, for you it? but is it's it? not right yeah. for them you right. know and so that was what was so nice about carpentry is that 
I finally knew if I was right or not. And in that time in my life, I was going through so much that it felt so nice to be right, hmm. to know that I was doing something correct. And there was wow. no one out there that could look at me and say, that's wrong. Right. Because then I could show right. them my sheet yep. and be like, test it. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and that you need was. It. You need the stability. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, the, and it's yeah. so funny because I'm an artist. I yeah. love not being stable, but it was so nice for a part of my life to do art mm. that was stable. Mm-hmm. Um, and learning how to build sets and and how how that all goes in and how the design happens um, actually opened my eyes to so much. So now every show I work on, I look at what the carpenter's looking at, how they or the the designers looking at the scenic designer, yeah. what they looked at when they looked at this show, yeah. what they saw when they looked at the show. Yeah. And then as a director, that really opens your eyes too because now you can think okay, so when they read it, they saw this. Why am I not seeing that? Right. You know? Right. Um, and I wow. was lucky enough through all of that to, um, I. this is actually a, a lot of what happens when I work at the pack is I literally looked at Brody and I said, I want to I wanna know your process. Mm-hmm. I want to know how you design this. Right. Because Teach I've me. built it, you yeah. know, I've seen I've seen the, the models and I've mm-hmm. seen the ground plans. How do you do that? Mm-hmm. And he was like, do it with me. Yeah. So I'm wonderful. Yeah. And so that's what led into I'm now um, assistant assistant designing our house, which is a show coming up this next semester. And that just that literally happened because I asked for it. I put myself in that position Mm -hmm. and I I asked to learn. Mm. And that's most of what I've done in my life. That's invaluable. That's what everybody tells you to do in college. That is literally what your professors preach and that is what the industry pros expect is they expect you Absolutely. to do that. And, and that's, that's beautiful. What you just said is beautiful because you, I, I didn't, how could we get through this episode without talking about our good friend, Jimmy Moreno, <laughs> who was just on, but I was like, he, he, to me, what you were saying is what he said to me, um, last episode about when he got his equity card and how he literally just asked and he, he knew, um, and he's a very, very good at connecting with people and asking how they've got where they are. And I think that creates a well-rounded individual. Absolutely. Um, exactly what you're saying right now. And exactly what, again, this episode is so solely built around, I think, um, you know, we'll get into schoolhouse rock in a second, but just with this whole, whole thing putting all of these different varied skills together how do you now feel it makes you um a better director or actor because i guess you could speak to director because we're about to get into that but as a director how does that make you work harder or you know i think what's most important as a director is communication right and you have to know how to collaborate mm-hmm. because if you're a selfish director and the yeah. only thing you want is your vision, then why are you doing this? Why are you doing it in theater? I should say too, because in film you can get away with being like, this is, you can get vision. away with a lot. You can get away with murder. <laughs> film, um, yeah. Film is, is not the same medium yeah. at all. But right. in theater, the, the whole point of theater is collaboration. Yep. The whole point is taking one person's brain and your brain and finding where you guys fit in. Mm. Finding the Venn diagram of your two brains. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And I think knowing so much about lighting and scenic and all of those things, I've been blessed enough to sit in on... Um, on meetings now where the director and the scenic designer are talking about their two visions. Mm. And I, I get to know... Um, things going into the meeting, the idea of like, we're not going to talk about this yet Mm -hmm. because we have to see what they bring to the table. Right. And then we can slowly bring in our ideas. Yeah. And that's really interesting because like, if don't you want to talk about like what you have in mind, but you have to know how to communicate with someone. It's Um, not, it's, that's a good example of, it's not what you say. It's how you say it and how much you say. Absolutely. Because the more you say becomes more confusing. And yeah. most people aren't even on the same level, um, especially the actors who are just know the script and they're just waiting for you to simply direct them scene through scene, right? Yes. Not the hodgepodge of every idea that you've had. I learned a lot of that yes. in what I just directed because I realized, why am I pouring out everything on, on these kids that I'm thinking? Because 
really that just confuses everybody. Oh yeah. And it's not doing anybody any better because you'll get it to that goal as a director anyway. Absolutely. And that's, but you don't that's need the to thing tell too is, yeah. is the beauty of directing and the beauty of being a director is getting someone to do something that you wanted them to do all along, but making them think that it was their idea. <laughs> That's a really good way to put it's it. It's all manipulation, yeah. which sounds horrible. Yeah. But, but as manipulation an actor, is as an such actor, a good tactic. Yeah. You know, because the actor totally. now feels yeah. <laughs> feels incredible. The, yeah. I, the the feeling that an actor gets when they have done something that their director wanted mm-hmm. is amazing you know that's that's the goal is to is to please your direct that sounds weird your goal is to please your director but it is like you that's your boss you know you have to do Mm -hmm. you have to play towards their vision and they have to play towards the playwright's vision right exactly and so as a director your job is to make them feel comfortable right and to make their voice heard through your voice right exactly so all that to say that was really wonderful i think that is Again, another example of invaluable advice that I think that you learn um, along the road. As, mm-hmm. but as a, but the cool thing is I I understand. Like I think you and I speak the same language in that way because I really understand what you're saying when you say that you have to be an actor and you have to do everything else yeah. because then it makes you a better actor, right? Absolutely. That's kind of what I meant earlier. Is you you still have your ultimate goal. Right. And I don't, I never really asked what yours is. Is yours to really be an actor or is it to direct or are you just kind of everything right now? (laughs) It's a, it's a really loaded question at this moment only because, um, all of what I've been doing since my injury was, is really directing and choreographing. Right. Cause you can't be out there. Because I can't, I can't really be out there until I'm fully healed. Right. Um, and it's odd though because I still I still go on auditions. I've I've been I've I just did an audition for Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Um, I did Very an audition cool. for a for Jennifer a Aniston show? film. Yeah. Wow. Um, awesome. Yeah. So I've been doing Wonderful. a lot of TV and film auditions. Yeah. And every single time I do a TV and film audition, I'm reminded why I love this, which is funny because often people go on TV and film auditions and end up hating it. Yeah. Right. But there's so much of me that lives in my acting. Yeah. Um. And so I, th- I think I've decided that after Schoolhouse Rock, I'm going to tunnel vision for a little bit mm-hmm. and just focus on acting because I yeah. didn't get to the past year. Right. But all of those things that you learn about even being a director, I think dr- directing exposes you to a lot of things oh, that you didn't know. Oh, my gosh. Or just how it's intricate. wild. Just the intricacies. And and you know? it, it teaches you how to speak to a director when you are a director. Because you now you realize. Exactly. And you know their language now, you yeah. know, because you're like, ah, the, I, you're uh-huh. saying that because you're thinking this. I understand. Because I've said that before. Exactly. I get that way. Um, I definitely had that when we were doing Greetings from Los Angeles because as an actor um, in that small space and environment, mm-hmm. I knew how to be, um, you know, I knew how to understand how even I was being perceived as a director. Absolutely. Because when I was doing like the Sudden Vision shows, like when I was in the first one. Right. I understood what it was like to be in a small cabaret on the outside being an actor, right. not being a director in charge of the vision. So all of that obviously plays into what you want to be in the end, mm-hmm. especially if you want to be an actor. Now you understand all the things that go around it, and now you are so much easier to work with, which you were Absolutely. talking about. So now let's get from there. Let's go back over to the directing side and get into Schoolhouse Rock, which is a union show, which yes. is very exciting that you – we're so fortunate to get asked to come assistant direct with Art yeah. Mankey. Um, I know that's coming up. So if you want to just kind of fill me in on how that ended up happening and what the transition was and all that stuff. Well, it was honestly a whirlwind because, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I'm I'm a newly college graduate. You know, yeah. what? Who, who can throw you into a show, a union show, right after graduating? Right. Um, it was actually all because of my professor. Her name's Carrie Hader. Um, mm-hmm. She actually just left CSUN because she is now um, – uh, a director at the South Coast Rep, which is a incredible theater, and it's such a good I've good opportunity it. for her, and we're yeah. so excited for That's her. That's wonderful. But CSUN's gonna miss her so much because she's yeah. she's incredible. But mm-hmm. um, we were talking uh, in the last semester. She actually was my professor for our musical theater workshop class, and it was all about auditioning for musical theater and how to act a song and all of this. And it was mm. one of the best classes I took mm-hmm. at CSUN. Yeah, and. 
every single class she would ask me about Evita. Mm -hmm. And during the class, we were allowed to direct our fellow classmates and bring things up. Yeah. Um, and I always had something to say because I can't keep my mouth shut. Yeah. And uh, she told me as I, as I left that if she ever had an AD, AD gig, she yeah. would let me know. Assistant director gig. Assistant director gig. you don't know what gig. that is. Yes. <laughs> Sorry people, for the If lingo. people don't know. <laughs> no, no. For all the lay people. Yeah. <laughs> you have no idea. Now you've been clued in. Yeah. Um, but she told cool. me that if she ever had uh, an AD gig, assistant directing gig, mm-hmm. that, that she would let me know. And I hung on that. I was That was so exciting for me. For and sure. uh, right after graduation, I think probably a week or two after, she messaged me on on Facebook and was like, "What is your cell phone number? I have a job for you." Cool. And I panicked. Yeah. Like, oh. um, I was like, <laughs> yeah. "Oh, I'm gonna die." Yeah. So she wow. she sent me um she sent, she sent me Art's uh, email and okay. said, "Get get a resume to him by tonight mm-hmm. because he's picking his assistant director mm-hmm. and I think you'd be great." And he needs awesome. an assistant director that has also choreographed. So right. put your directing stuff and your choreography stuff Wonderful. on a resume. Absolutely. I was at work at the pack Mm -hmm. and I did not have an updated directing and choreography resume. So did you write it? My sister wrote it for, or I wrote it out and then my sister formatted, formatted it for me because I didn't have a computer to format it. And so I sent it to her and she's in Seattle. And so I sent it to her and I was like, I am sure you're busy, but please, (laughs) I need this by six. Like, please send this to me. So she formatted it all on InDesign, made it more beautiful than I expected. I thought she was going to put it into word. It's nice to have a sister who... <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. And so yeah. she wow, sent it over. Awesome. I sent it to him and yeah. he was on vacation so he couldn't get back to me for a couple of days. And when he did, he asked to meet up. Wow. So he had looked over my resume, um, asked to get a cup of coffee and I was so nervous I did not get coffee. I yeah. just drank water the right. whole time. And True. he was like, are you sure? I'll buy. And I was yeah. like, no. My heart rate's going to jump like, out yeah, my exactly. yeah, exactly. I was like, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. already hyped. Yeah, yeah. But we had... What was beautiful cool. is it was technically an interview, mm. but it didn't feel like one mm-hmm. because he just wanted to know who I was as an artist. Wonderful. That's all. Like he, we sat there and he he asked me about all of my uh, all of my the gigs that I was working on currently because mm-hmm. I was choreographing Mary Poppins Jr. at the time. He had asked me about the uh, the directing I had just finished, which was Evita. Yep. And then I started talking about carpentry and welding mm-hmm. and all of this stuff. And he literally just let me talk about all of the art that I'm passionate about. And at the end of the meeting, I finally got to hear about what he had done and Mm -hmm. he had directed Hannah Montana, which I I fangirled over so (laughs) hard. You gotta tell people what he did. He directed Hannah Montana (laughs) and I was, I couldn't even handle it. Oh, that plays into Carly got picked by Miley. So she was talking about that last episode as well. (laughs) That's hilarious. That's so funny. Wow. Look, we're all, yep. we're Mine, all linked. I'm telling you. Um, telling you. But so he directed some of Hannah Montana and he was talking about that. And uh, he actually That's was cool. one of the founders of a Noise Within Theater, which is a okay. really big theater in Pasadena. Oh, wow. Um, and then he just at the end was like, it's cool. So you want to go on this ride with me? And I, <laughs> I literally almost died. And then we walked down the, <laughs> down the street. He took me into a, uh, to a theater bookshop. Okay. He told me to buy a book yeah. and then he left. And wow. he was like my little theater wizard and um i actually got to sit in on the callbacks for the show i helped run the dance call yeah um which was insane because i got there and he was like ready to dance and i was like us <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I didn't know. Um, yeah. I was like, uh, I had brought all of my dance shoes, and I was like, which shoes should I wear? I oh wore the gosh. boots I showed up in because it wasn't even that oh, like, yeah. and it was so chill. But wow. I learned so much, and these were all professional older actors. They were all in their early to late 20s, mid 30s. Union actors. Union yes, actors. Okay. Um, and that was crazy to me too because all I've known up until this point are kids, you know, mm-hmm. people my age that are just trying to make it and yep. to work with people that <laughs> have made it. Yeah. It's really eye opening. Totally. It's what you pay the money. I mean, you're not paying money, but yeah. I mean, in school, that's that's part of what you pay the money for. Absolutely. Connections. But in this case, I mean, if you think about it, it was. It, it was I mean, absolutely a school connection. School, organically from school, professor got you yeah. that gig. But, I mean, Noah Noah Azuna was on and he chatted about Love NYU him. and he was chatting about exactly that. Yeah. These professors that he has were willing to push him, but also open to helping 
get you in or at least in the right direction and that's 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 totally important and these these teachers teach because they love to teach you know they're not they're not there i mean sometimes they're there for the paycheck right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but for the most part they're there because they love to inspire and they love to push you and i think that's what's so beautiful and that's why i mean that's a big reason why i teach tap is Mm -hmm. because i didn't I didn't have to teach tap. That was a that was right. kind of a job that fell into my lap, and yeah. I've loved every second because I I grow people. Like I I grow children. Yep. That sounds weird, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Like from day one, I teach them something, and then four, four years later, they're still they're doing that times twenty. You know. Yeah, you're their mom. <laughs> that anyway. was a joke from earlier. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but okay, I was gonna chat. Uh, briefly too do you are you hoping to try to get is this a union production that is going to sweep people into the union like i was chatting with jimmy about i whenever you work on a union show obviously your goal is to take a step up right to take a step forward and take a step toward the next goal and your next goal when you're not union is to be union um (laughs) so i know there's a legitimacy (laughs) yeah yeah for sure for sure um and so i a big thing that i'm doing and i think and i can't I don't know and I should do more research but I think that there's a different there's a different like there's the actors union and there's like the directors union That's yeah what someone told me there's a way I, yes there is there definitely is so, and there's also the film and television exactly side, and there's, so there's also SAG the theater and then there's equity right and so um I'm hoping that I that this starts lending me toward equity yeah. and getting my equity card but I think yeah. it would it would go toward directing which right. is actually really exciting because right. I would love to do that. Yeah. Um and it's already scary enough being a female director. So if I had my card it would help me more especially at this age Absolutely. if I had my card. And for those like, of you who hey. don't know what that does basically once you get your equity card as either an actor or a director um, I don't know if they offer for anything else. They probably do. Have, they probably do. Everybody has their own union. Yeah. But um, basically, long and short of it is you are able to hire union talent um, and and all that stuff and yeah. pay union, you know, pay union people as well as, in this case, hopefully you get swept into, since it's a union production, maybe you can get your union card yeah. through it. That's what happened with Jimmy and once. That's why he's getting his card. Exactly. But he still had to ask. It wasn't in his contract that he signed for right. eight shows a week. Oh yeah. So. And that's, that's, that's definitely not why I took the gig. It was yeah. more for the experience, but that oh, yeah. would be a really sure. great plus. But that, but that, I think that to people is very, to people, people, you know, the people who are established, um, that is big. Because oh, yeah. they want to know that you are legitimate and you're not just in it for for the payoff, getting in union, exactly. or you know, getting paid, or it's all of that. I mean, yeah. obviously, I think that you are going to get paid for this, no doubt. No, right? I'm not. You're not. Okay, this is all volunteer. But see, I you never know. Yeah. That's the thing is is sometimes the biggest opportunities happen and come through a free gig, and you have to do a and lot of them. The volunteer is a what, lot of them. <laughs> what gets you toward the money, you know, right. and that's so many free gigs. Yeah, I mean. That is the most degrading feeling in the world. And I, I could understand that continually doing free gigs would mess me up if I wasn't doing what I loved. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm already I'm already like on the borderline of just quitting right. stuff. Because I am tired but of doing free. But you have to know that you're doing it for a reason. Like there yes. has to be something deeper than yes. the surface level. Oh, absolutely. And that's why, that's why yep. I have four jobs is yep. the idea that each of my jobs are in the same field. Right. They're all something I love and they don't all pay well, but I do get paid. You know, I still end up getting money somewhere, Yeah. but at least I know that I don't work one job that I don't like. Mm-hmm. And that's a blessing. Yeah. And the second totally. I stop liking a job, I'll leave. <laughs> if yep, there's yep. no more for me to do right right, right. like if i if Obviously. i if i don't like it but i know that like i have to do it for a certain thing right, within a certain reason. payoff yeah, yeah within then i'll reason. stay yeah. but if there's if i have hit my limit and i'm like you know what i don't love this anymore mm-hmm. that's I'm part gone. of youth yeah that's part of being your own individual and part of i think a lot of th- this plays into it but a lot of people my age our age that i've spoken to recently something that happens with all of us is I think we all get very discouraged that, um, you know, we are being subjected to the system. And I, ch- I talk about this a yeah. lot, but it's true. It's so in this social media heavy age, 
everybody thinks that they're supposed to be at some level. But in reality, you need to boil it down to your individual life. This is you as an individual. Your as a per absolutely. And everything, everything happens because of that. The minute that you jump into the system and say, oh, I want to be a people pleaser. That is the minute that, you know, of course you want people to love you. Of course. But you want people to love you but for what about who you are. you loving yeah, you? Exactly. You have you know? to be an individual. You and have I, to be And that. I've learned yeah. that the hard way through and through is right. the, the idea that you, you can't, no matter how hard you try, you can't please everyone. Right. But the one person that you can hope to please always mm-hmm. is yourself. Mm-hmm. And I think when it comes down to social media and theater and all of this, everything you're doing is comparing. Mm-hmm always right you are constantly comparing yourself to your past self your future self the self that you want to be and right. everyone that is around you right so trying to find that stalemate yeah. of like who you are yeah is difficult but mm-hmm. worth it yeah totally no totally um it's but see that's that all plays into it like it all that whole thing is part of the equation of um you know you want I don't know. For me, it's not, I want to make it. I mean, it is deep down. I do want to be recognized for what I'm able to do, but ultimately it's, did I do a good job? There has to be something else. Did I do a good job and do I have something else to back it up? But my big thing is, did I do a good job with the things that I was opened up to? And capable of doing. Yeah. Right. And that plays into what you were saying. Um, you know, the carpet carpentry stuff and all of that stuff, the directing, the acting, all of the dancing and the tap dancing and everything that you do mm-hmm. all completes you as a person, Absolutely. right? And any one of those things is acceptable and totally okay to pursue. Absolutely. And I think you sit, you are on the same wavelength as me. And a lot of people have shared this same, the, just the same sympathy of, um, I'm okay with doing any one of these things. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be one. No. If I can continue to do a good job and do the art I love, it is okay then for I'm me. Set. To, right. Well, that was a really beautiful yeah. thing that Art said during our interview. Sure. Was I was talking about, he said to me, he's like, wow, you you do everything. You yeah. do a lot. Yeah. And I, I brought up about tunnel visioning and not knowing what to choose. And he asked me, he said, mm. which one do you want to do? Do you want yeah. to choreograph? Do you want to direct? Do you want to act? Sure. Um, and then he, he looked at me because I, I was confused and I didn't know which one. And he said, we're capable of doing everything, mm-hmm. but we're not capable of doing everything at the same time. And the, that really stuck with me because that's something I've wanted. I try to do everything all the time yeah. and I just, yep. my brain fizzles just out. It doesn't work. It doesn't, you can't, <laughs> no, it doesn't. you can't put your all into one thing if your all is 12 other places. Mm. Um, and... He said, after he said that, it really made me think about what my next step is Mm. because my next step has to be one of the 12 things because after that one, I can go to number two and then I can go to number three and I can go to number four. Just not all at once. But if you do all 12 at once, your, your passion gets dried out. And there's few people who can actually do that. It's yeah. Un- it's really difficult. That's actually something I learned from this past semester because I, I haven't had a day. I told you this. I haven't had a day off in nine months. Yeah. And that all those nine months were I went from carpentry and welding one day to directing the next and then teaching the next and then ha- having a, a performance final in my next class. So <laughs> I how are you supposed to focus on all of those things? Yeah. Like, how am I supposed to wake up and build something when I'm trying to run lines in my head? Mm. You know, you exactly. have to be able to focus. Yeah. And then it also has the opposite effect where um, you, you, me and Peter were all chatting about this before we started. Um, the fact that if you tunnel vision too hard in one thing, sometimes that ruins you. you and Absolutely. That's the cool thing about being young. That's why I love this show is it's cool to be young and it's very cool that you're able to try a bunch of different things before things get too, too serious. We are so lucky that we're able to do that. Especially out in this valley, I would say specifically. Oh, yeah. The amount of talent and the amount of organizations. And it's just all a wonderful, you know. I think I think it's a good starting platform is we what have, I would say. It's such a melting pot. Yeah, it is a melting is pot. Is that there are so many things that you are capable of doing yeah. that you're able to do. It's all about telling yourself that you're capable oh, of yeah. doing those things. Absolutely. And you have to I, – I just love – I was mentioning to you that me and Travis and my family came – 
from Burbank. Right. And didn't move here till I was 13. And coming here and getting involved in theater for the first time in my life and seeing, wow, like I moved part of we, the reason we moved is we had a lot of friends out here. Yeah. There's just not a whole lot going on in Burbank besides like the movie studios and all that stuff, which my dad is invested in. But he was like, well, we need a better place to live. And so coming up here, it brought most opportunity. Most of the people in Santa Clarita is yeah. most of the people, most of the people in Santa Clarita are people that work in the industry that needed somewhere to build their family. Mm. And that's why they came here. And that's why we have so many creative people Yeah. because everyone here are built in the arts. Oh yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. Um, yeah, let's, let's go below the surface a little bit. Um, some of your inspirations now. Whew. It's, oh, a, it's a hard so one. It's a very hard one to conjure that's up. Very, it's very hard. Musical, I would say musical theater, just because that's kind of, or theater, well, one or the other. So, so a big thing about me as a performer is that I didn't start doing this until college. I I mean, I danced my entire life. Mm-hmm. So a big part of, of my love when I was a kid was just dancing. I did yeah. ballet, tap, and jazz. And then I did Irish dance for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I competed in Irish dancing and I didn't oh, love yeah, I competing. Knew that. I knew that about you and I forgot. <laughs> yeah, no, but that. I, yeah, it's, awesome. I, and I learned a lot through that though, that I didn't like competing. I liked the art, but I didn't like fighting people for my art, you know? <laughs> um, and That's so when I went to call, I did show choir in high school at yeah. heart. I did heart show choir. And, oh, you um, were at heart? I yeah. didn't know you were at heart. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's kind of fun though. Cause at least you get a taste of theater. Yeah. yeah and that was right. the thing too, is, is yeah. when I left show choir, show choir was my life in high school, mm. my life. That's mm. all I did. Mm-hmm. And so when I left, I already knew I was going to go to COC and I didn't know, uh, what I was going to major in. Cause I definitely wasn't going to do like math or English. <laughs> and so I, and I, and the funny thing too, is I was like, I'm not going to do dance because I yeah. knew from a very young age that I wasn't going to be a professional dancer, mm. uh, because I love dance, but I am not flexible. And I am not as capable as most. <laughs> and so I was like, that's a great thing for me. Yeah. Is I'm not gonna, I can't major in that. Mm. And so um, I found theater and I was like, theater, musical theater, that's very close to show choir. And at the time. Wow, that's really interesting. I didn't know that that's how you came upon That's it. exactly like, what happened. That's literally okay, what happened. Yeah. And I just, wow. I was like, all right, I had never in my life heard what a monologue was. I did not know anything about Shakespeare. <laughs> I didn't, wow. I literally nothing. Yeah. I was. I was a plebe. Yeah. And so um, I I was just doused in theater hmm. from the moment I went to COC hmm. and immediately found the love of my life. Like the second I started taking those classes, hmm. I couldn't believe that I was ever doing anything else. You got the bug. I, I got the bug. You got um, the bug. And so the inspiration <laughs> that I have found, because I don't have... I don't have inspirations that uh, other people do in the sense of like, when I was four, I watched that movie and I was like, <laughs> that will be my life. Um, my inspirations are my teachers. Yeah. They always oh, have yeah, been. Definitely. Susan Hinshaw, David Steers. Um, there are so many people. Brody Steele is top dog. Like I, I there are so many <laughs> yeah, people in yeah. my life that have taught me and have looked at me and said, you can do this. Mm. And a big thing too is I had such a confidence issue for so much of my life. I was yeah. bullied incessantly in high school. Mm. Um, and I came to COC and that was the first place ever where, where people looked at me and thought that I was capable. And just the wow. idea of being capable yeah. was enough for me to push myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I Yeah, w- that is so true. It's yeah. so... That what you just said, like just triggered something within me. I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, but yeah. no, it does. I mean, it, it, that is, that's all you need to know is yeah. that you can try, at least try. If you have the ability to try and that plays in with the whole social presence thing that bothers me that a lot of people just like, I, They're like uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, you can't do that. Yeah. But you, so you did. Yeah. And, and that you, was yeah. so many people. So, so many people have asked me, why do you do this? Mm-hmm. Right. And they always ask like, why do you like to act? Um, and my initial answer was like, I like making people laugh because yeah. I used to be a big, big comedy person. Like yeah. I, everything I did was comedic. Yeah. Sure. Um, and then the more I grew and the more I delved into theater, I realized that the reason I do this is because it's the one place that I am allowed to feel. Mm-hmm. Because everywhere else in your life, mm-hmm. you are suppressed. Oh, yeah. Any kind of emotion is suppressed. Even if it's happy emotion, you know, you laugh too loud, you're too, you know, like quiet down. Mm-hmm. Or the minute you're born, you're shushed. 
you know? And that was yeah, my mom. That's true. Wow. My mom. I never, never thought of that. Yeah. No, the minute you're born, <laughs> What's you got to quiet down. All the womb references. I, what is <laughs> happening? Ah! That was a joke that's, from that's, before the episode, but. We talked for too anyway. long before we started this. Anyway, um, but that's very a funny. big, wow. a big thing that it's that true. always happened. My mom grew up in. An, my mom's from Texas. Mm-hmm. She grew up in this age where children were supposed to be seen and not heard, mm-hmm. right? And so that kind of trickled into the way I was. What in I the was, six, 60s, 70s? Yes, that and, time period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when that kind of trickled into when when how she raised us, but she also like she grew and and realized that like you have to let your kids like do stuff right sure. but um uh we were very ra- we were raised traditionally in the idea that like you have to be respectful we had this huge mm. thing about like you can't put your elbows on the table and like all this like it was always about sounds, yeah sounds being, like the same <laughs> yeah right yeah, and it's, yeah. it was always about making sure that you look perfect mm. and the idea that whatever you do reflects on our family right and so when i when which i think I was, is the right value oh even absolutely though and i think it's the right it's, it's it's tough but it's, it's tough, true but yeah. it's the way to it's the way to be taught at I least think. you at least you've learned you grow up with values values absolutely yep. and i think uh yep. but once i started acting i could go on stage and do things that i was never allowed to do at mm. home and do things that i would never let myself do because yeah. i was too afraid right and so the, right. the i and i could cry you know, and and no one was gonna yell at me for crying or or mm. shush me or tell me I was being too dramatic. What it, what it was for me was why are you doing that? That that was the the thing that I would get. Yeah. Like my buddies from that I would do sports with. Why are you doing theater? That's weird. Like yeah. Are you gay? And I was like, no, no def- why I'm do a you man. Have to be, like, why? <laughs> I'm a t- I'm a man. I still do sports. I'm playing at the but same even time. Then, even then, yeah. why is it so negative? Nothing wrong. To be... That's nothing wrong. No, with exactly. Gays but that's what we're I'm saying. saying is like, I'm a why was that guy always that, like yeah. this big deal? And, exactly. And that's that has always been the thing. Is like, why right. do you want to express yourself? Oh yeah. But then, right. and I always see this post that goes around. That's like. If you are against any form of art or like refuse to pay for somebody's art form, then go a day without technology because that's art. Technology is art. Mm-hmm. Go a day without movies, yep. music, any any kind of pictures or anything yeah. and see how you live your life because we are surrounded by art. Surrounded. And so... It's true. It's expression. Exactly. Yeah. And that's... I think, I think artists are the truest people. Yeah. Because we actually get to feel mm. and that's art art is all all in empathy and emotion Boom. that's all like it's all based on empathy and emotion yep. and that's why you look at something and finally and you connect with it is because you feel something mm. and so ever since i was i started this five years ago that was the first thing that came to me was yeah. this is the only place where i feel free right. to feel Right. And that was the biggest blessing. So when it comes down to your your question was inspiration. Um, my inspiration is is I want to show people that it's okay to feel. Mm-hmm. And I I learned that the hard way. I went through a lot. I've I have suppressed so much of my life and so much of the hurt in my life, um, and even some of the happy and some of the you know. And finally, I find a place where there are people yeah. that want you to do that. Right. You know that right. constantly push you. Mm-hmm to to be the person you always wanted to exactly yep exactly i mean and that is all so beautiful that's why i think de- you know dependent on what you're doing um i think it, that theater has such a base um for people to be able to move forward and be confident we talked about empathy with jimmy mm-hmm. and i feel in a big way i feel like that's really big for straight like straight guys in theater i think that's big yeah. because it helps you know it helps you understand that you're not being girly that connotation is so strange so, i i don't understand it I don't know but, where it came from. but i do i do appreciate like gay guys in theater in the sense that they are uh, giving a real expression of themselves because oh, i i'm a big i'm a big believer that you have to be genuine in everything that you do. I'm very genuine. So Same. everything I do, I'm I'm not a no filter at all, but I, I definitely um, I think a, will say a how it is. healthy filter is right. It's right. nice, you know. I'll say it how it is, but, but I also, like, I'm not afraid um, of, you know, you, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's oh, absolutely. Just, 
I, I it's like it, it's amazing to me um, how many people really just get in this zone where they feel like they cannot be themselves because they're so pressured. But what's the outside pressure? There's no outside pressure. You put yourself through it because Absolutely. you try to hit some niche that you try to fill. Yeah. And sometimes you just don't belong in that niche. And theater gives you the opportunity to come and say that and be in a community of different people, very different people. I never would have been friends you with half the people I know. so much yeah. from the people that you surround yourself exactly. with in theater. And right. so many people come from different... And that's what I loved about CSUN too, mm. is that it's you don't have to audition to be oh, in that theater cool. program. That's cool. You just sign up for that theater program right so was it a double-edged sword sometimes i'm yes, curious yeah. yes i mean there, it can be definitely oh be. absolutely yeah. and there were there do, were times you see where me, uh, throwing up the yeah. logo <laughs> i just moved my fingers out of like, the shot just to show my double face, face. <laughs> I, am, I am vain yeah uh no but it's a double-edged sword and i mm. think a lot of people at csun will say this but i think what the beauty of the double-edged sword was is that you got to see where you started mm-hmm. because a lot of those people uh, half of those people half those people there were quite a few people that had never really done theater Mm. that are in it and they're just like they're doing the same thing i did when i went to coc was the idea of like i'll do theater i did theater in high school it was kind of fun you know and i'll i'll major in it yeah and i always say that like if you're gonna pick a major why not pick something like theater right i'd rather yeah and i I feel that way about like i feel the opposite about that with film film is not if you've never done the arts i would not recommend going into film yeah. Right away. Right away. I think I, I think you eventually over time learn to love it. Yeah. But for me, I'm at a point right now where I'm kind of like, it's a toss up because right. I don't, I love, I love editing. Like that's my thing. Like I have a job in editing, but I don't know I if I would want production I think it's harder to find the deep love in film if you yeah. haven't found the initial love in the art form. Sure. You know, like sure. you, you can't just, I mean, there are people that I know that have like fallen into the love of film from like the day they started, just like we do with theater. But I don't understand that yeah. because I like, I now I'm slowly learning and transitioning into TV and film. And, and I'm, I'm doing the opposite. Exactly. We're switching. Because I was film and now I'm, and now you're I still finding... am. I still am. I definitely still am. And I still want to keep making things and directing things. It's of just, it's just different. It's a very sterile and stale even i would say environment yeah. being on set it's tough it's very what i tough. do it's love ultimate gratification it's exactly yeah. yes and right. what i do love about tv and film that i'm learning more and more as i'm transitioning is that tv and film is where the art form is kind of like you can't have a show without an editor mm-hmm. and the show's through line doesn't work without yeah, an, editor. an editor yeah it really doesn't and i never really looked into that until I started taking acting on camera classes and then I I watched this video about editing and it blew my mind because the idea that like nothing happens in a film or a tv unless the editor and the director find find that line you know and um and 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 an editor is kind of like a stage manager in theater and the idea that it's the unsung um like like people don't watch a movie or maybe they do but like i don't know if people watch people definitely don't watch theater shows and they're like man that stage management was real good <laughs> like they don't you you're only noticed if you do your, your job wrong yeah. as a stage manager yeah. yep and editing i feel like is the same way mm-hmm. is that people don't even think about your job yeah until something's weird because that means you're telling the story right yes because they're yep. following along and everything's happening correctly right. and then yep. nothing you know um and i just watched i just watched uh, a movie called call me by your name yeah which was beautiful yeah i love what's his name the the kid actor uh, that is great timothy he's not a kid but yeah yeah he's wonderful uh, he it, was in incredible uh, what is it Bur- is it birdie what's uh, la- uh, lady bird lady bird yeah, yeah. yeah. um birdie. but lady bird, yeah. birdie yeah but there are there are he's scenes great. in that where where the editing sells it. Yeah. And I didn't, I probably wouldn't have even noticed that sure. until I started thinking about it, you know? Yeah. And I think that's what's so important about TV and film is the idea that like, you can throw a state, a, 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 a show on for theater without a stage manager and it'll still be like fine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Definitely. Cause like the director can call the, call the cues and like whatever. Right. right. But you can't, you physically can't do a production TV and film without an editor. Exactly. So, very interesting. I mean, it, and it's all interesting. And I feel like you and I could talk for hours about Too everything. Long. So <laughs> <laughs> I said the same thing about Jimmy. Just could keep going and going. So um, don't at, get the three of us in a room because that would be, oh, be dangerous. <laughs> uh, we better run, run for the hills. Uh, um, 
but I love that. I love so much um, our little small community of people who are all so supportive of each other and what each other are doing. And, so and that's just wonderful. It's valuable. Um, in closing, because Aaron, Aaron's not going to be performing anything or singing or doing anything because of that. <laughs> <laughs> because of her ankle. Um, otherwise, we'd have her do some a tap number or something yep, like that. I'll be back. Yeah, she'll be back one day. Um, but what if you want, you can take this time to kind of promote uh, Schoolhouse Rock or, or anything you want to share about what's coming up into yes. into this this here camera right here. It's my time. <laughs> you can share um, whatever you'd like uh, since we're not doing an end bit. I don't, uh, Schoolhouse Rock Live is at the Lewis Family Playhouse in Rancho Cucamonga. Don't look at me. I don't know. I was, I was scared. <laughs> I was like, do you know? I'm just kidding. I do know. Lewis oh. Family Playhouse in Rancho Cucamonga. And uh-huh. it runs through, through nope, rehearsal in September. It runs through October. Every you, weekend you in October. In, every weekend in every October. Every weekend in October. Um, Wonderful. It's going to be really exciting. Uh, yeah. It's it's quite a drive. So yeah, it's a 60 minute show. So it's really short, but it's going to be so fun and so good. Um, and then our house is this upcoming semester at COC and I'm designing that, that show. So go see that dry- too. Designing the sets? The set. The set. Yes. Okay. The set for that show. Okay. I'm, I'm the assistant scenic designer for that show. Go see that. Um, I, nothing else is on the plate. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You could, I, if you want to end, you can share with, you mentioned it before. Maybe getting back into acting. What is after you? You mentioned to me when you texted me. Uh, I don't have anything going on. Yes, after that. for the first time in my life, yeah. Aaron Chalakian does not have anything set up. <laughs> you heard it. Here. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> That's funny. Aaron Chalakian is going to rip her hair out in just sign a her. couple of months. <laughs> sign so, her. Sign me up now. Yeah, for um, something. No, but uh, yeah, probably I'm, valuable. I'm. Yeah, it, yeah, it'll be good it's time because I'll I'll be able to really reflect on where I would like to go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do some acting, which will be great. Wonderful. Um. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I also have my own YouTube channel. It's called Aaron Cho Burrito. Yeah, I'm how could we not? I was gonna say, how, how can we, we not <laughs> bring her up? <laughs> what do you got going for that? Are you gonna do um, some stuff? I'm, I'm, I have some, some things planned. Aha! Uh-huh. So I need to watch because I don't think I've ever, I've only seen the clips on Instagram. Yeah, there, like she's people, wild. But. It's gonna be a jolly old time. She. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's join very me funny. Over do, there. You, do you have an alter? Do you have an alternate person? No, it's or? me. I oh, just, oh, oh! I was I like, just, mm, that's no, weird. weird. That's funny. Um. Anyway. Aaron, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having it's me. people like you that help inspire this next generation of people that are on this show. Um, I try. And just in the community. And we're very excited for the future. There are some very um, reputable... Oh, how do you say that? Reputable? Reputable. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have some very, very interesting and exciting... People coming on Ooh. that I cannot share because I don't know if they're confirmed. <laughs> but that right there is my face in a caricature. The 1 in 20 show. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe on our YouTube channel. And we now created a Twitter account, which only has nine followers. Oh, but dang. it will grow. It will grow. Um, at 1 in 20 show. And thank you guys for watching.